Hi, I'm Lene Cravens. I'm the gallery manager here at CCU. Um, I work for Sarah Jane Parsons uh, to do our programming. Um, but I co-curated the exhibition Sequential Self with Iris Bechtel, who is a gallery uh, gallerist and an artist living in Dallas. So, um, but today we're going to welcome Christine Suggs, who's one of our artists, who's awesome. Um, Christine is also Dallas-based. Um, but I'm just going to read their bio, and then I'm just going to hand it over to Christine. Um, so Christine Suggs is a comic artist living in Dallas with her wonderful partner, one dog, and two cats that are super cute. Okay. I can't get enough of them. <laughs> um, I mean, your dog is cute. So. Uh, they currently work on a young. They're currently working on a young adult novel about spending the summers in Mexico as a teen, set to release in 2023 from Little Brown Young Readers. Uh, Christine's work explores the intersections of their gender, of their identities, namely being fat, queer, Latinx, leftist who loves all things cute. Uh, bonus facts: Their day job is an app designer. They are an avid Dungeons and Dragons player, and they're quite obsessed with their cats. So, like they're everyone, obsessed. should be. <laughs> but I also love seeing your D and D stuff. I haven't played in a while, but um, it makes me feel like oh, like that little part of my <laughs> life. But um, I'm gonna hand over to Christine, and we'll get to hear Christine talk about their work. Thanks. Okay. All right. Um, okay, so um, my talk is on the extremely sexy topic of workflow, <laughs> so get ready. Um, first off, I mean, I've already been introduced, but here's the picture. Um, my pronouns are they, them, there, so um, my example sentence I always give is if you want to gossip about me later, you can say like, oh, I met Christine, they were super cool, I like their pink hair, I hope to see them again. So that's the example sentence I use. Um, so yeah, I've been making comics online for like over 10 years now. Um, uh, my probably most like seen work is the work I do with The Lily, which is a subsidiary of the Washington Post. This past summer, I actually got to see my work in print there, and that was really cool. I ordered like three copies of the newspaper. <laughs> um, and yeah, like when Lene said, I'm working on a graphic novel, so that's we're going to see some previews from that as well. And then um, some other illustration work I've done is some stuff for Lean.org, um, Central Market, and uh, just various private commissions. And yeah, my day job is in design for an insurance company. Again, <laughs> extremely sexy stuff. Okay, um, this is the number one question I get whenever I tell people all of the many things I'm into is where do you find a time? And I always love to answer, I take a nap every day. <laughs> Um, I am just extremely anal about planning, and you will see this. <laughs> so um, I find it really frustrating and like upsetting, I guess, or really tragic, I don't know, <laughs> whenever you have really talented people who can't quite funnel their work into like a good workflow, and you just see them trying and failing to meet deadlines. Um, so yeah, we're going to talk about how to not do that. Okay. Um, I think the most important thing is knowing your limits and really asking yourself honestly, like how much can I work comfortably? Comfortably is really key here because if you ignore that, eventually you will not be able to work. Um, the first one here is financially, unfortunately, like it's okay if you have to have a day job. I would recommend one if you can swing it, one that's not like physically demanding, so that way you still have energy to work. And then Physically, we'll talk about that too, but like art is a physical medium, especially if you're like doing sculpture or something, but even just drawing, you know, you're spending time punched over, your wrist is gonna hurt, like there's a lot going on. And then mentally, um, I include this one because, especially in terms of like the autobiographical work we see on the show, you're kind of sharing your trauma with people and that's a lot, um, and you don't have to. Just, you can stop anytime not everything you make has to be seen or shared or mentioned at all. Like you can just not. So sometimes I'll make really personal work and just sit on it and that's okay. Okay, this is my chalkboard chaos. <laughs> I finally get to erase it this weekend. I was so happy. This was my inking schedule for my graphic novel. Um, so I wrote down literally every week and I set a page rate of 10 pages a week and I mark it off every single one. Um, I always plan for my worst. I am an anxious little bean. So, <laughs> um, I and it worked out for me. I finished my deadline over a month ahead of schedule. Um, and I also was able to take breaks in between there. Um, 
I always say under promise over deliver and really just do lots of math, unfortunately. Like I once I figured out how long my book was, I can't tell you how many times I've divided that by the number of weeks I had left. All my Google searches were like, how many weeks until November 20th? Like that's all I do. So yeah, um, really just trying to break into chunks. And for me, I have to make it visual because that's how my brain works. Staying on schedule, um, routine and rituals. I feel like this has been really talked to death since working from home is a thing now. But really, it's, it's you know, having your workspace, having your little pretty coffee, whatever you need to get going. Um, don't stop sketching. I'm really bad about this, and I'm trying to get back on track. Um, it's, it's just really good for your brain and for your work to just kind of do a warm-up and kind of get in that zone. Um, and then the last two is work ahead and take breaks. So if we go back here, you see these little like, pluses I have? Those are weeks where I drew extra. Um, let's see, you can kind of see that one room is a plus five. That was right before my birthday, and I was like, I'm going to take like two weeks off for my birthday. So I like worked extra so I could take some time off. Um, so you know, you have some days where you're just like, the drawing gods are with me today. I don't know what it is, but I'm on a roll. Like, use that time. And you have some days where you can't draw anything, and like, step away. <laughs> like, it's the worst thing you can do for yourself. Not just for the work, but also for like mentally, is to try to keep going when you're not in a good spot for it. Okay, um, I love this book. So check in with your body. Um, this book is called Draw Stronger. Um, if you don't have the money for it, take a yoga class because a lot of poses in this book are just yoga. Um, you need to take care of your body as an artist, and this book specifically talks about artist stretches and things you can do ergonomics, stuff like that, and ways to both like do preventative work and reactive work for taking care of yourself. All right, we're going to do some stretches. <laughs> so this is one I learned from physical therapy. I only went to one appointment because that's how good it was. So um, put your hand in front of your face. Perfect. And then raise your wrist up like you're holding a tray. And you should feel like a nice like crackle in your wrist. And you can do it like facing forward. You can do it where you follow your hand, and you can do it where you're looking the other way. I think this one's more intense, so if you can't do that, it's cool. Um, I do like 10 to 15 of those on each like head motion, and it's really good. Um, any chest openers are good. I love to find a doorway and just kind of lean, um, just because I I punch when I draw so. Um, but yeah, make sure you build in time for that. You know, they have lots of apps where you can like set a timer to get up every however long. Um, I'm really bad about that, but <laughs> I usually just stretch when it hurts. Um, okay. Positive reinforcement, like a dog. <laughs> uh, keep track of your progress. That's why I have that chalkboard, so I can look up and be like, I did a thing. Um, asking your friends to look at your work. I think there's different streams of this. If I want someone just to be like, wow, this is amazing, I show it to my husband because he doesn't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll just be like, this is great, good job. Um, but if I want like specific feedback, I'll go to somebody else. And I would say also be specific for what you want feedback on. Um, you know, at this point in the book, I really don't want someone to tell me that the story sucks because well, that's too late, guys. <laughs> so yeah, just be like, hey, I need help on color or layout or whatever it is. And then reward yourself for meeting big deadlines. I actually just last night went out to a nice dinner with my husband. So yeah, I think it's just good to remind yourself like you're doing something really hard and you need to celebrate it. Okay. This is the creative cycle. Um, I borrowed this from Emily Cheeseman, great name, great artist. Um, if you're into like medieval illustrations, she's your gal. Um, but I found this on Tumblr like years ago and I just really love it because I think it really nicely illustrates the cycle of, I think it's totally normal to have periods of intense production where you're inspired, you're feeling it, you're just executing stuff. And then you afterwards, you're gonna get tired. And I think a lot of us feel constant pressure or guilt to just keep producing, especially because of social media. Um, and it's just not healthy for you as a person or for your work. Like you just need to take that time. Um, 
And I don't know, it's, it's kind of crappy. Like I think self-care has gotten like really just bought and sold <laughs> as this horrible industry. But it, it's it's important in terms of like productivity, like yeah, you will be more productive if you rest, but also like you just deserve to rest because you're a human being, so like please do that. Um, I think I really like the bottom here where it talks about burnout, because like whenever you, you know, work too much, you're gonna have longer recovery period because you will need that physically. And then momentum, like sometimes you can just keep going. So um, just paying attention to that, taking breaks and recognizing that like that is also part of the process. Like my design professor used to bring up, um, you know, that's what shower thoughts are. <laughs> but you can't solve a problem until you stop thinking about the problem. So like it's very important to take those breaks. Um, and then for me, because I am a Gemini, I have to have variety. So I like a rotation of projects in different stages. Um, actually, my day job is really good for this because it's app design, and that is completely different from what I work on normally. So I can get really organized and like really specific and stuff like that, very like type A kind of thinking, and then I can jump into something else. I also try to work on different like small comics. If I have like a silly thing that happened to me, I can knock that out in an hour, and that way I can still get that little instant gratification. Um, so yeah, I like to have a rotation of projects to work on. I'm including sketching again just because it's important. And then finally, other creative fields, I think they feed into your main field. Um, for me, this is like sculpture. Um, I make like little sculpty creatures. And whenever you're playing with 3D forms, it helps you better understand 2D forms or things like music. I play piano. And you might be like, how the hell does that help you with drawing? And it's like, not directly, but it helps me like deal with perfection and like trying to overcome that and just kind of go with the flow. So, and it's also just nice, like take breaks again. Part two, we're gonna learn how to cheat at comics, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, art is really, really hard. Do whatever you can. So this is gonna be through the lens of the graphic novel, but this can apply to whatever field you're in. I firmly believe that like, I, or I firmly don't believe in the myth of like a like struggling artist. So like, make it easy on yourself. All right, well, unfortunately writing, I don't have a great shortcut for it. <laughs> That's just hard. Um, but my basic rules are what I call word vomit, which is just getting it out. Put on your sad playlist, just feel the feelings make your dog worry about you because you haven't gotten up in like 10 hours just get it out um i use bullets it doesn't have to make sense it just has to make sense to you i try to make it make some sense because i have a terrible memory so <laughs> if you have ideas for visuals at this point write them down so you don't forget um if you're writing by hand you can sketch at this point or do both um i, I kind of did both as i was developing the concept so all right, so these are examples of outlines. The one on the left is basically the word vomit version. It's just bullets. It's just like, what happened? Because this is a memoir, it's just me trying to remember shit. And then on the right is the short outline, basically like a one or two sentence per chapter summary. So I can look at things like pacing. And again, because it's a memoir and it's from like over Oh gosh, 15 years ago? I, I can't remember everything in what order it happened in. And um, actually at one point, I got so twisted up about it, I had to stop and write things down on post-its and just move them around until it made sense. Um, so yeah. Scripts. Okay. Write scripts however it makes sense to you. That being said, if you end up working with an editor, they're going to give you something that looks very scary at the end, like this thing on the right. This was the one I did originally, which is just like pages in bold, hard returns for panels, brackets for um, what's happening in the panel, and that's about it. Not a lot. And then one day, they came back to me with this format, and I was like, I didn't even know you could do freaking purple boxes in Microsoft Word. Okay. <laughs> so that's just like their standard for their publishing house. It varies. So like just whatever makes sense to you, and then another person could read it. This was hard for me because most of my stuff has been just through me only, just posting online. So I had to like be a lot more specific than I would be normally when I write a script just like on my notes app. So yeah, 
It's kind of an adjustment. Okay, thumbnails. Um, I work very small for thumbnails. Like, yeah, babe. Um, I learned this in design school. It's just so you can go fast and make as many as you can in a very short period of time. Make notes because, like, you don't need to write out everything at this point. You're just trying to get the layout down. And then it's okay if things start shifting here in your script. Um, you know, there's no way I could predict how much of all this is going to fit on one page. I just try to, you kind of get better at it as you go on, but it's, I still shift things around. Um, what else? That's about it. Make it messy, make it fast. Um, handling. I cheat on this too. <laughs> I make a grid template. This template is like a three by three by three, and then I also split it down the middle vertically and horizontally. And I build my, all of my panels off of that, like you can see in these. They just take up different amounts of those. You can absolutely break that grid. You probably should break that grid every now and then. Um, but to me, it really helps than just staring at a blank page. Um, but don't feel married to it. Um, you can draw, you know, paneling is a very personal and stylistic choice. Um, you can just draw on grid paper. I did that for a while when I just didn't have time to make comics in college. I was like, just, you know what, let's take out the middleman. You can just draw them by hand, intentionally wonky. You can use sticky notes for the work we're going to be doing later. Or just not have panels. Um, so these are some examples of some alternative paneling. Just This one was just drawn in a straight pen. And it's one of my favorite things I've drawn. And it was just like, I shat this out in like 10 minutes. <laughs> um, same thing on the right. That's just like kind of my journal sketching I do in the morning when I'm still waking up. So. Um, I really love drawing a straight pen too, because it's just like, I don't know, it's just very pure to me. <laughs> okay, pencils, this is when you get a lot more specific. Um, you know, this is kind of a scene of me going to the airport and saying that I'm a parent. Um, we're, you're gonna cheat in this portion too, we will talk about that. <laughs> um, but yeah, you're just trying to get, I, I'm pretty specific in my pencils. Um, some people are a lot looser with them, but I just find it easier to like get everything mapped down at this point. This is when I start pulling in references. This is when I start like being like, like this suitcase. I was like, oh, I have to figure out how to draw this freaking three suitcase. Okay. Like this is when kind of like, this is probably the hardest part for me. It's probably I hate the most. <laughs> All right, cheating. Google Maps. <laughs> just do it. <laughs> um, I One morning, I was like, just searching for like a grandparent's apartment in Mexico City on Google Maps. And I'm like, I can just call my mom and find this in five minutes. But I kind of got into it. And eventually, I found it only knowing like one landmark, I think, would track them down. But, um, and then I just found a cool looking street, took a screenshot, drove, drew over it. It'll change. So, Google Maps, I'm not sure what the rules are. Also, I'm not a lawyer. But things like stock photos or just like I had to look up a lot of landmarks for the book because I did a lot of touristy things. You're going to change it by the act of drawing it. You're going to draw over it. You're going to color it. So, like, generally, if you change it enough, you're good. So, The Sims. <laughs> I built my sets in The Sims 3 and then panned around and took pictures because I hate backgrounds. <laughs> they were great. <laughs> I'm never going back. Um, one thing you want to watch out for because it's a you know it's a video game it's an isometric view it's going to feel a little uncanny valley a little fakey fakey so my pencils are a little more rigid and then in the inks i try to like loosen up a little bit i don't make everything a perfectly straight line um i'm still trying to figure out how to do that so all right inks this is what i just finished um i think it's good to have a mix of heavy solids and areas for the eye to rest um, you don't want it to be, I mean, maybe you do, that's a style choice, maybe you do want it to be really dark and heavy. Um, one thing that's very hard for me, because I'm a digital artist, is thinking about what actually is going to show up on print. Um, you can zoom in real, real, real close on the iPad and you can zoom back out and be like, oh, no one is going to see that ever. So <laughs> make sure you zoom out a lot. Um, and don't hang, get hung up over backgrounds. They're just there to let you know where you are. 
Um, you know, I, I think this is part of the don't make yourself work harder than you need to. If you don't enjoy drawing backgrounds, don't kill yourself over backgrounds. I, I am a person-focused artist, so like, they're just there because they literally have to be because my editor is like, hey, there's not enough backgrounds. <laughs> so, um, but you know, the skyline is enough. You get it. They're driving to Dallas. Done. Moving on. All right, color. I cheat with this too. Limited palettes. I almost never draw in full color because I hate it. It's hard. Um, so yeah, local color, you know, coloring things as they appear. Like, okay, this can is pink. I got to color pink. I don't do that. Like, it's too hard for me. Um, I'm doing complementary colors in my book. I'm kind of going off of, like, Talavera tiles, that Mexican pottery feel. And that's what's going on here on the top. And then here's some other pieces that you use. In this, in this case, I want to try to find color that kind of relates to the work. So this is about being bisexual, it's in the bi flag colors. This is about being genderqueer, it's in the genderqueer colors. But, I mean, it doesn't have to, it can just look cool. Um, there's also the, uh, what is it called? The gradient map tool, very fun to play with. If you're just like, you just want to play with limited palettes, I would check that out. All right, questions before I go on to the next section. Um, so yeah, that's just about all the book things. Yes. You are doing color in the book, right? I that's am. Like that looks like yeah, that so way. that's that's the book. So yeah, it's going to be in orange. I love your black and white work, but I was like, I do love your color because it's so, like, even if it's not quote unquote realistic, it does add so much to the work in a way that it's like hearing like the references for the color palettes is really, it's content that is un necessarily like you don't necessarily know it but it adds a lot to the concept of the work so yeah yeah i i honestly think that's a product of me being trained as a graphic designer <laughs> where everything has to have a reason and purpose and also like often you are limited by like ink colors and things like that it's more expensive to do full color printing um so yeah i think that's just kind of a byproduct of that but i'm i'm happy that that happened <laughs> you mentioned to play with something I forgot what you said. Oh, like something tool. A gradient map. Okay. Yeah. Um, I know they have in Procreate. Uh -huh. I'm pretty sure they have in Photoshop too, but I've just been on Procreate for so long. Are you so, like your book in Procreate too? I am. It is 100 percent Procreate. I just take a Photoshop for resizing, basically, and that's about it. Do you have any favorite uh, pens in Procreate? I don't know enough about it, but I know there's like fancy. Mm -hmm. Like special pens. And <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> My drawing skills are about twenty years old, so um, I haven't done it a bit. Um, honestly, most of the book is made with the, one of the default options. I think it's just called like dry ink. It's one of the ones I use a lot. Um, but some of them, um, actually, no, these are also the sketch tool. Okay. Um, um, other ones that I like though, Bardo brush, B A R D O T brush. Um, they have really great packs you can download and they're huge and they're like fairly cheap. Um, I love their mid-century one. It has like a really wonky feel to it. It's just like super nice to draw with, um, like just a sketch. Um, their pencil set is really good. Their watercolor set is really good. So yeah, check them out. I guess we're going to the workshop now. We're going early. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I'll give instructions here first. Um, it's just some setup for it. Um, I'm just giving a quick shout out to like other um, autobiographical work that uh, really resonated with me. These are all people I was obsessed with through high school and college. Um, so Dustin Harbin, um, Eric Moen, who was actually in the first iteration of the show that I was like geeking out that like, I was going to be in the same show as her. And Lucy Nively is basically my comics hero. Um, and then Hourly Comic Day. Um, so this happens every year, February 1st. And you may have seen this if you're on art Twitter or Instagram, but you make a comment for every hour you are awake in one 24 hour period. If it sounds like a lot, it can be, <laughs> but it depends on what you do. Some people make a four panel thing every hour. Some people just make a drawing. You can kind of, you know, like on the right, Anthony Clark, um, he's an Android online. He uses more of a template, so like it's a lot easier that way. And then the one in the middle, I don't know if it's Lucy or Lucy because she's French, so not sure. Um, but that one is obviously much more involved. But again, limited palette. 
And then Kate Beatons is just super sketchy and loose, and she's like the master of that. Um, I've participated a few times, and you know, I've done templated ones on the iPad, I've done straight pen because I was running around that day. Um, last year I did four panels per hour, and I was like, I didn't do anything today. I'm gonna have to think of things to do to like draw. So I took a lot of walks that day. And yeah, so it can be whatever you want it, want it to be. Um, but in our case, we're going to write a list about your day so far. I guess I can do it too, because there's not many of us, so <laughs> sure. Um, and then see if you can get it down to like four or six bullets, and each bullet's going to be one panel. And in our case, those will be sticky notes, because we don't have time for panels. Um, and then draw. If you want a bonus challenge, you can draw straight in pen. Um, if you want a super bonus, which I think I did this one of these years, I think the 2021 eventually turned into this. I made them wordless after a while, and it was just really nice. Um, yeah. Anyone have any questions about this part? Okay, so let's go make comments. <laughs> yeah.